Good evening, friends. Welcome to our Foundry evening service. For those of you in person and for those of you joining us online, my name is Angela and I serve as seminary intern here. We welcome you whenever and wherever you are. This evening, we are continuing to practice our gratitude meditation. And for those of you uh, with a bulletin in person or online, I invite you to speak together the words along the margin and to sing together the words that are indented. We invite you to join us this evening in our call to worship. We are all reflections of the divine image. In every life, we catch a glimpse of the presence of God. Thank you for creating us in challenging and amazing ways. Our differences are gifts to the body of Christ, each holy, necessary, and beloved. Thank you for creating us in challenging and amazing ways. When we fail to include others, when we prioritize our own comfort over an accessible community of love, help us to listen to bodily wisdom, embracing one another in all our complexities as we remember exactly who and whose we are. Garden Poem by Caitlin Curtis. I came outside to listen, but all I could hear was noise. The hum of the car next door, an audio tape blaring through closed windows. I thought I might hear from the seeds in my garden, but they were quiet. Instead, my dog whines as dogs passing by. Crickets begin to sing telling me an age-old story, I'm sure. The birds are quieter tonight than they were this morning, and I understand that I am still practicing how to notice, how to be aware, how to hear the cricket when the rest of the world is speaking. 
But it would seem that the trees speak too, even in the stillness. And I see up toward the sky a baby bird bobbing left to right in a nest, waiting for its parents to bring home dinner. I'd never noticed before. Mosquitoes are flocking to my skin early in March, early because heat finds us in winter nowadays and makes the earth hotter than it should be. I look up again and I can't find the baby bird because maybe it was only meant to be found in that one sacred moment. I wonder, often lately, what the bird thinks of us. What the hawks soaring overhead wonder about the gossiping, grouchy, sometimes gracious people below. I never noticed before that the large pine tree to my right curves a little curves a little the higher up her trunk you look. She knows she's beautiful, I think. She knows she's wise. A cardinal enjoys an evening meal at the bird feeder, and I'm close enough that I can hear the seeds crack in his tiny orange beak. It is a gift to notice. And it is there that I realize maybe the seeds did bring me here after all. Maybe the best place to view the world in this very moment is from the ground, at the edge of the garden, at sunset. I go inside and the husky asks with his eyes what I've seen. I, sil I silently say as I scratch his head, anything and everything, pup, anything and everything. Oh, what's that? 
In a spirit of honesty and vulnerability, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all the saints, God of all the sinners, hear our prayer. We would be saint-like, holy, good, patient, loving, but often we end up feeling more like sinners, full of failures of morality, selfish, mean. Perhaps you see us simply as human, as beloved and flawed and trying and failing and succeeding. In all of this, forgive the wrong that we have done and bless the good we have accomplished. Keep on loving us and helping us and molding us more and more into the image of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Friends, hear this good news. The love of God is beyond measure, and we are included in that love. Know that we are forgiven, and thus freed to love and serve. Alleluia. Amen. Jesus Christ be with you all.
this time, I invite you into a time of prayer. We carry all prayers, some that we offer aloud, and some that we carry silently in our hearts. This evening, as I offer five prayer petitions, I'll end with a question. For what or for whom do we pray? During the moments of silence that follow, I invite you to speak aloud the prayers that you are carrying with you. After a pause, I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and we will sing our refrain together. Friends, let us pray. Loving God, we pray in gratitude to those in our community, our biological and chosen family and friends. Friends, for what or for whom do you pray? Lord, in your mercy, Healing God, we pray for those who are sick and hospitalized, those who feel the burden of the days, those who are struggling with illness. Friends, for what or for whom do we pray? Lord, in your mercy, Living God, we pray for ourselves, for our joys, concerns, and needs. Friends, for what or for whom do you pray? in your mercy. Forgiving God, we pray for people who we have caused harm or we have let become enemies. Friends, for what or for whom do we pray? Lord, in your mercy. God, we pray for the church, for all who gather in silence and in praise this day around the world. Friends, for what or for whom do we pray? Lord, in your mercy, Loving 
God, we come to you as we are, as beloved children of God. As we go into this week, surround us with your loving kindness and help us to love kindness, do justice, and walk humbly with you. Lord, in your mercy. Our scripture reading tonight is Psalm 100, which is a psalm of thanksgiving. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Diana Butler Bass wrote a beautiful book called Grateful, The Subversive Practice of Giving Thanks, in which she shares how the practice of gratitude can help to reorient our hearts and our minds. Gratitude is not just about being nice people, but is rather a posture of openness to the divine, our neighbor, and ourselves. As we dive into our meditation practice this evening, I invite you to embody a posture of openness so that you may notice something in your life to be grateful for that you may not have noticed before. Listening to your unique body wisdom, I invite you to begin by finding a comfortable position here or at home, perhaps with your feet on the floor back supported, palms facing up, open to all this experience has to offer. I invite you to begin by noticing any tension in your body without judgment, and to either gently close your eyes or lightly soften your focus, gazing six to 12 feet in front of you or towards the ground. As you get comfortable, I invite you to take a slow, deep breath in and out. 
bringing your attention to the present moment and allowing yourself to feel more peaceful. Breathe into your belly, noticing in gratitude how your lungs expand and contract as they gift your body with life-giving air. Over the next minute, I invite you to continue breathing deeply in and out, bringing your attention to any area in your body where there is soreness, tightness, or tension. Breathe your warm, oxygen-filled blood into that area. And as you breathe out, let the tension release. you continue breathing, notice any worries, fear, anger, irritation, jealousy, or judgment. Breathe into those emotions, noting them and allowing them to flow out as you breathe. Another breath into any uncomfortable emotions and breathe out, releasing them. Now, notice any thoughts, memories, plans, associations, anything other than being present in this moment, breathing. Breathe into these thoughts, and as you breathe out, allow the thoughts to flow out with your breath. that our bodies, emotions, and thoughts are a bit more open. We can begin to focus on the events, experiences, people, pets, or possessions for which we feel grateful. First, I'll invite you to recall that if you are engaging in this practice, you already have several marvelous gifts. The gift of life itself, the most precious gift. Someone gave birth to you. Someone fed you as an infant. Someone changed your diaper, clothed you, bathed you, taught you to speak, and to understand. The gift of a heartbeat, steady, regular, moment after moment, pumping fresh, life-giving blood to all your organs. The gift and challenge of your body and of everything it has carried you through. For both the beauty and the difficulty of your magnificent and unique body-mind-spirit. I invite you to think about all of the things we have today that make our lives more comfortable 
than perhaps life was for our great-grandparents. We flip a switch and light appears. We turn a tap and clean, drinkable water flows. We adjust a thermostat and a room grows warmer or cooler. We have a roof to keep us dry when it rains, walls to keep out the cold wind, windows to let in the light. We enter a vehicle and it takes us where we want to go. We have access to machines that wash our clothes and we have clothes to wear, places to store them. There are machines that store our food at just the right temperature and help us cook it without us having to gather wood. We have indoor plumbing and public libraries that have thousands of books and recordings, free for anyone to borrow and read. We have public schools that can teach us to read and write, skills that were available to only the very few just a few hundred years ago. Now, take a moment to reflect on all the thousands of people who have worked hard, some without knowing you at all, to make your life easier or more pleasant. Some who plant, grow, and harvest your food. Some who transport that food to the market. A team of people who make the roads and ra railways that make it easier to transport that food. Another team who maintain those vehicles and roads those who take the time to design the store, the shelves, the packaging that keeps the food safe and allows you to find what you need. The postal service, someone who sorts the mail and others who deliver it. Those who maintain the servers so we can get and send email and access the internet. Those who gather news stories and photos, and those who create the many mechanisms by which the news can reach us. All those who play sports, create art or music, or plays or poems or films, to entertain and uplift us. Now, consider the people and pets you know who enrich your life, those who smile at you and cheer you on, those family, friends, acquaintances, colleagues and peers, those ancestors who worked so you could live well, those friends who support you when you need a hand.
take a moment to reflect on some other reasons for feeling grateful in this moment. grateful for. When gratitude fills our hearts and minds, it can uplift our spirits. During this next song, I invite you to sit quietly for a few minutes, checking in with your body wisdom and noticing how you feel compared to when we began our practice. No judgment just noticing. You may choose to keep a journal, perhaps noting three to five things a day for which you feel grateful. When we are grateful, fear disappears and abundance and opportunity appear. When we show gratitude, common days are transformed into thanksgivings and ordinary opportunities become unexpected blessings.
This is our invitation. Come, beloved children of God. Come and be fed with the food that God gives freely. Come and quench your thirst with a cup that God gives freely. Come and let your spirits be filled again with the goodness of your Creator. Holy God, we hear your invitation and we see your gifts of life and grace. We gather together to remember, to be nourished, and to be strengthened for the journey ahead. We would sing aloud our songs of joy to you, creator of the universe. Out of the emptiness of chaos, you brought forth creation, plentiful with all we need, graced with gifts beyond imagination. Offered the place of honor in your good garden, we filled our souls with worthless lies, moving out of glory's neighborhood into the junkyard of the world. Prophets brought your word of judgment and your gracious invitation to come home, but we would not listen to the advice that they offered us. Then you sent Jesus, who humbled himself that we might be exalted. Therefore, we come to your table singing, our voices joining with those in every time and in every place, lifting our glad songs to you. Blessed is Jesus, our Lord, our life. Glorified as your true child, he came to show hospitality to all the strangers of the world. Deserving of the seat of honor, he humbled himself to serve the guests. Refusing to let us be left in the ruthless hands of sin and death, he entered that prison we call the grace to set us free to live with you. We remember the way that Jesus showed us his love. As we remember Jesus' life and death, as we come to the table of the resurrection, we speak of that mystery we call faith. the bread and the cup, simple gifts from creation which grace us with your life and upon those who gather around your table. And when we gather around the wedding feast in glory, with all the poor, the broken, the prisoners, the oppressed, we will open our mouths to receive your joy and sing aloud to you our praise for all eternity, God in community, holy in one. Amen. With the confidence of beloved children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, the table is set, and all are welcome. If you are here in person, we have juice and gluten-free crackers. And if you are at home, I invite you to partake of bread and, uh, or a cracker, juice, or water, whatever you have near you. The table is Christ's table. Come.
Please join me in the prayer after communion. Loving God, we give you thanks for this meal that nourishes us, body and soul. By the bread of heaven and the cup of life, you make us one body. Bind us together by your spirit that we might live into your hopes for us, a community centered in Christ and rich in compassion, commitment, courage, and care until every life can be lived abundantly. Be our guide, be our hope, be our comforter. Amen. Benediction from John Alsozate Patheo. May the stars shine just for you. May the rainbow display its most glamorous colors for you. May the sun shine golden, and may the moon embrace you in her silver light every night. May your mirror not lie to you. May your heart best your mirror. May your day have room for prayer. May your sadness leave room for joy. May your joy leave room for sharing. May you love the world as well as you love yourself. And may you be an asset of joy in the world you live in and to the next. God from 